All right, today I'm gonna to take this graphophone made in 1890. We're gonna make a brand new belt and we're gonna clean it up, tune up the sound, and then make it wireless transmission to a remote speaker and listen to this electronically as well as acoustically. So we'll just have some fun with this adventure. So this thing is really cool. It's a oldest version of an iPod, I guess. It's fully wireless and remote wind up got a key here here's what the records look like here's the case it's all like fiberboard you open it up and it's got a cylinder inside inside the shell this is like super soft like a pillow made out of this stuff this soft cotton or whatever's in there and here's the cylinder and it's tapered a bit at least on the inside it says what it is i can't read it right now this slides onto here, onto this tapered cylinder. There's a needle here, and there's a little bump right here. There's a hinge back here, and this rides on the cylinder grooves and moves this diaphragm. It's kind of clear material they've made it out of. It looks like it's mica or whatever that stone is. And we can hear that. This thing here, when it's spinning, rides on a little groove. It cruises across this grooves are tracked to the speed there's a worm gear under there this thing is just great now this one here recently it's got its original belt and it stopped working so i can wind this up and if i let it go this is supposed to spin and it doesn't spin so we've got a bad belt in here all right so let's take this thing apart and take a look at what's inside as we go. Now in here is a spring that is the winding spring and it's driven by some gears and drives this cylinder here that's attached to a belt that lives inside of this chamber. This also spins some gears, spins a worm gear and pulls this across. There's a lever here that engages and when I do that, this little thing drops down and when this is on it, it drops this down onto the record and it picks it back up and this has got some play to it. And we also can see here that this rubber has deteriorated over time and it goes around the diaphragm. This is breaking the air seal. This diaphragm, it's like a speaker cabinet with an air leak in it. And we're gonna check that by uh, putting some positive airflow pressure. And we'll do that by doing this. And I can feel air, you can hear it, leaking out around the diaphragm. Now with that air leak, that's going to reduce the sound quality because some of the sound is going to leak out. We want that to be sealed so all of the sound is focused out of this chamber here into the horn, which goes here. So that sound would come out, go into that little hole, and that has got some pivot to it too, and then comes out this horn. And then we can hear a beautiful sound like this. All right, so we'll work on that as well. We'll want to seal that up. Let's go ahead and get inside this belt chamber here. Need a small flathead screwdriver. It's got some muck and grunge all around it. I'm not going to clean it up. I kind of like it. It's nice to have this thing kind of in its old and worn state. And there's our two cool little screws. Okay, now it won't come off because the speed control. Now what this is, this screw right here, is the speed control. And what it does is it pushes on a lever. You can see this little lever here. And this lever is connected to this little pad on this metal hinged piece that rubs on this wheel. And what happens is when this thing's going, the centripetal or centrifugal force throws these little bake light balls they expand and as they expand they bend these these springs and that pulls out and it kind of they expand out and pull in this brake thing they pull this cylinder in towards the wall in towards that little pad and that's how it has a speed control the faster they spin the more it pulls in the slower they spin the less it pulls in and this adjusts where it rubs on that wheel and that's how the speed control works and we can do that later once we get this fired up. So I'm gonna pull out the speed control adjustment screw, pull off and take a look. And there is the problem. We've got a bad belt here, and this is some old rubber here. It is cracked and worn and broken as well. All right, so we're gonna need a new one of those. These here are these wheels, and they're slightly rounded. They're kind of like um, domed a bit. 
And that's what keeps a flat belt on. You'll see that a lot of times where a flat belt, it seems like you'd want a flat belt. You'd want to, you can either put it in a groove, a channel, or this strange um, phenomena where if you have kind of a rounded wheel, the belt wants to stay in the middle of it. Next, we got to make ourselves a belt. Now I could go online and try and find a belt if somebody's made or something that fits it similar, but I kind of enjoy making stuff and the excitement of creating something. And also I don't want to wait. I don't want to order it and wait for parts. Uh, I have not done this before. And this is friction tape. And friction tape is kind of gooey-ish tape that does not stretch and it likes to stick to itself a lot. And we'll measure that out against the belt here and we'll add a bit to it. Cool, and this friction tape is wider than the belt, so I'm gonna go ahead and slice it down the middle. Yeah, I don't know how long this belt will last, but uh, it should get us working. I want this to be diagonal. I don't want these ends to be abrupt, so I'm gonna put a diagonal cut on there. Okay, there's two diagonal cuts. Let's go ahead and line this up onto the piece here. Wrap it around the wheel. Okay, so it looks like I can see about the overlap that I need. Line these two up here and we'll just pinch it together. And we'll see if this simple press fit is strong enough. Cool, so we got ourselves a belt and let's go ahead and wind this up. And the next thing I wanna do, okay, this has got some muck on it. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that off with the sandpaper while it's spinning. But when I slide the cylinders on, sometimes it um, is a little bit rough, it's hitting bumps. Okay, let's go ahead and put the speed control back on and the cover to the belt. And let's go ahead and put the speed control on and see how that works. So we'll fire this up. And then I can put the brake on it. Let's try that. Next, let's go ahead and put the cylinder on and listen to what goes on here. So we'll slide this on. And when you slide this on, I think what's supposed to happen is you're supposed to flush the end up. So I'm gonna slide it on until the end is flush with the metal. We'll put the needle on, tighten up the screw. Slide it over to position at the beginning. Bring it up to speed. Okay, the utmost infidelity. Uh, it still sounds a little saggy, but I think this spring is a little old too. So if I tighten it up a lot, the spring slips. Let's go ahead and work on the diaphragm. This rubber surround, which is deteriorated, is letting air leak out. So let's take and seal that up. And for that, I'm gonna use some silicon rubber. And the reason I'm gonna use silicon is you can peel it off so it's kind of non-damaging. It's kind of soft when it's on there and it'll fill it up and it's kind of pliable. So it, and it doesn't get hard, so it shouldn't change the acoustic dimension, the dynamics too much, and it's also not overly gooey, so it shouldn't dampen it too much. So acoustically, it should be pretty neutral. And I've got this little nozzle here. I bought a bunch of these nozzles for fixing mics and other stuff that are very, very thin. I'm gonna gently do a positive pressure test here. And that seems to work well. I mean, I can feel just the tiniest bit of air, but it seems pretty solid. Since there's not a lot of force on this, we can test this right away. Definitely some wow and flutter there. Not as precise as a modern turntable, but good enough for me. Good enough for this adventure. Now let's take this to the next level and make it wireless. Even though it is wireless, we'll make it more wireless by adding wires. I've got a couple of these Sennheiser belt packs. This is a 
transmitter that is an EW500 transmitter. It's a bit older for transmitting a microphone from a camera to a remote location or whatever, wireless mic. And this is an EW100 receiver. And I've tuned these both to the same frequency, so they talk to each other. A Sennheiser lavalier mic. What we'll do is we'll plug this into the transmitter here. All right, hello people. Let's see, we got ourselves a wireless system. Now let's see what happens if we fire this up. I'm gonna put this little foam windscreen on here and put it into the player. Well, and this can go into a remote location. Fine. Let's go ahead and feed the mic down. Now it's got a stereo. I guess that's kind of like the modern version of batteries going dead, except we don't really need to get new batteries. All right, there we go. That was kind of fun. Something to do, and thank you for joining.